Good morning. Okay, so it's good morning where I'm at anyways, and good day to where, whenever you're listening. Welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show with myself, Lori Larson. Today is episode is 174-2. How awesome is that? Okay, I, <clears throat> excuse me, got a little bit of frog in my throat, but I am super excited about today's show. I'm curious to see where it's even going to go. Um, when I was driving yesterday, I, I was listening to that book or that audio book because it's not an actual book, but it's a recording you can get either through Audible or I think you can even purchase it on uh, Amazon. Hay House, I think, sells it, but it's called The Power, um, the Power of Vulnerability with Brene Brown, uh, Teachings on Authenticity, Connection, and Courage. Well, I'm, I got into the fifth and sixth CDs yesterday and oh my God, now this might be something that's going to blow your mind. It certainly blew my mind. She talked about the importance of play. Like why goofing off is really good for you. And she it was really clear to say that playing was not competition. So if you're playing like in a baseball game and you don't care whether it's competitive, I get for me, that would still be play. Um, but if you're playing for an end result, that is not what they, she would consider play. Uh, so I'm going to read this little article. This looks like this was in a half post. Uh, it says, um, so this is what Brene says. A few years ago, I noticed in my research that wholehearted people, my term for men and women with the courage to be vulnerable and live their lives all in, shared something else too. They goofed off. They spent time doing the things to me, and so this is Brene saying this, that seemed frivolous, like gardening and reading. I couldn't wrap my head around it. Were they slackers? Then one day I watched my kids on a trampoline in our backyard and then it hit me. Wholehearted adults play. So researcher Stuart Brown, MD, um, and just as a side note, reach, he has a book called Play that you can actually find. I'm planning on getting, I'm, you know what? I am sure that I bought that book before and either just never read it and then gave it away or really, really looked at getting it or I've got it still and I can't find it. Either way, I just remember, I remember looking at that book before. So anyways, researcher Stuart Brown, MD, describes play as time spent without purpose. To me, this sounds like the definition of an anxiety attack. I feel behind if I'm not using every last moment to be productive, whether that means working, cleaning the house, or taking my son to baseball practice, but I can't ignore what the research, mine and others, tell us. Play, doing things just because they're fun and not because they'll help achieve a goal, is vital to human development. Brown believes that play is at the core of creativity and innovation. Play can mean snorkeling, scrapbooking, or solving crossword puzzles. It's anything that makes us lose track of time and self-consciousness, creating the clearing where ideas are born. This is crazy. So that, that's me. That's me, the purpose-driven person the person who uses pretty much every minute to be productive, that same person who judges herself if she's not doing something productive, <laughs> like holy mackerel. Like I could see the subtlety in the areas of my life where I choose this, okay? Ah, you know how you just know what goes on in your head and when you read something, it's like mind blown, okay? And the thing is, this is mind blown too, mind blowing, because of the fact that I am aware that this is something I don't choose, something I haven't chosen, and I am looking so much for something different in my life, okay? 
So, which means it's a mistake to restrict play to just vacations. In 2014, I hope you'll join me in resolving not to base your self-worth only on your product productivity, it's playtime. So apparently this article was written in 2014. So she's put a dare here, okay? Create a playlist. Write down three activities you could do for hours on end. Hers are reading, editing photos on my computer, and playing ping pong with my family. Now, carve out time on your calendar, even when you're the busiest. So she says, even when she's the busiest, she scheduled unstructured time. It's important to protect playtime the way you protect work, church, or PTA meetings. Play well with others. When my ki kids and husbands made their own playlists, we realized that our usual vacations, which involved sightseeing, wasn't really anyone's idea of play. So now we go to places where we can hike, swim, and play cards. The things that make us all our most silly, creative, and free-spirited selves. Oh, okay, I've not made my list yet, um, but I am going to. I'm actually going to write it down on my list of things that I have to do for today. List of play things. Okay. And, um, you know, who knows? Maybe on tomorrow's show, I'll list them off, the things. I know one thing I like to do is Sudoku. Sudoku? Sudoku. Sudoku? Sudoku. However it's said, I've hear it said Sudoku but, and Sudoku. With how it's spelled. I can't remember. Anyways. So. Holy crap people. Like seriously. When you think about it. Like play. So. Um, let me just see here. I think this is. Um, oh, I was just going to look at a different article. Um, so this is from another one. Uh, posted by Erica DeJossa. And uh, she says, I hope you've had some great time off with family and we get back into the swing of work and plug away at our New Year's resolutions. We're going to discuss a counterintuitive topic, rest and play. In case you're just tuning in, we've been covering Brene Brown's 10 guideposts for wholehearted living. In setting the premise for this series, we've had discussed the development of secure attachments in our relationships, learning how to live a wholehearted life, can lead us towards security, connection, and int intimacy. So this week, we're focusing on a guidepost, uh, guidepost seven, cultivating rest and play, letting go of exhaustion as a status symbol, and productivity as self-worth. Like, look at that, even just that sentence, people. Cultivating rest and play, letting go of exhaustion as a status symbol. Now, that's not something I've done. And productivity is self-worth. I have done that 100%. But, you know, if you look around, like, how many people t say, I'm tired? I'm tired. I'm tired. Yeah. Actually, you know what's even funny was I heard my grandson say that yesterday. That's interesting. So, you know, and he, I get the sense that he actually was that poor little bugger. He was so cute. Oh my God. Not poor as in, I feel sorry for him, but as in, it was a cute thing to see the authenticity, to the Lala, I'm tired, you know, <laughs> that was so cute. But there's the authentic, authentic tired. And Brene actually talks, uh, you know, apparently in studies. Now I realize that there's this like a bell curve, right? For me, you know, there's going to be people that are on either ends of the spectrum that don't fit into this. But seven hours of sleep, if you lose, if you don't get seven hours of sleep, two nights in a row, you're considered tired, okay? By the people who do studies. I don't know who those people are, but even Brene talked about that. I could probably go back and listen, but I'm not going to. So um, anyways, 
So imagine if we're running around with having not much sleep, but do you notice though that if you're having conversations with other people and you say that you're tired, usually the other person is tired too. And then it becomes this, this rightness about being tired. Well, you know, because I've been looking at life so incredibly different lately, well, no, not lately, for a long time. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I, I'm always in question about it. And uh, so if we're in almost like the, the rightness of being tired all the time, what if we started turning into the thing about the rightness of being grateful? So actually that reminds me of Brene even talks about in her, in her audio, The Power of Vulnerability, how she said that if she walked up to a group of mums at the school and said, oh my God, you guys, I am so well rested. My life is so much fun. I've got everything organized. And uh, I can hardly wait to see what shows up next. She says, I would have to back away slowly from that group of parents. <laughs> like, because they would all be like, you're crazy. Like, we make it such a status symbol to, to be exhausted. And do we actually question these things that we choose? Now, of course, I have to go even more it's productivity is self-worth, but, but there's a status symbol of productivity too. Like seriously. Oh my gosh. You know? Okay. So anyway, so she goes on further, this article, generally speaking, when we hear the word play, we think of children. Children are always engaged in play, turning everyday objects into an exciting new fort or hideout using their hairbrush as a microphone. Um, although I know some of us adults still do this, she says in brackets, or cooking something imaginary up in their play kitchen. The reality is, is that play goes beyond the imaginative play we see with the children. In The Gifts of Imperfection, oh, I'm, I'm going to have to read that book again. Brene Brown introduces Stuart Brown, Dr. Stuart Brown, a psychiatrist and the founder of the National Institute for Play who suggests that there are seven patterns of play that are present throughout all stages of life. In the broader sense, play is defined as engaging in an activity for enjoyment or recreation rather than serious or practical purpose. According to Dr. Stuart Brown, there are seven properties. It's apparently purposeless, voluntary. There's an inherent attraction to it. While doing it, there's a freedom from time. It diminishes the consciousness of self. It has improvis improvisational potential, as in open, not rigid. Has a continuation desire, which makes you want to do it more. And play isn't just about imagination. It's about rest and rejuvenation. It shapes our brain, fosters joy, creativity, and innovation. It is essential to our health. And you know, um, she, uh, like, there's a lot more to this article, actually. Uh, you know, and maybe I'm just, I'm going to continue into tomorrow's show with this. I am just, um, like, one of the things that Brene talked about was that when we don't play, it doesn't become benign in our world. It actually becomes malignant. And, and she made some kind of a comment, almost like if that's what makes us even angry as parents, like when you see someone playing or goofing off or wasting time. Like I remember when my kids were younger, I would joke with them. And I seriously was joking, but I wonder how much I maybe wasn't even joking. Like if I would have looked at what I was actually saying, but I was like, okay, that's enough stop playing. You're having too much fun. And they would stop and they'd look at me and then they'd laugh and then they'd keep playing because they would see I was joking. But I wonder what I was really saying with that. You know, what I was saying about myself, how much I wished I was playing. Because I even heard myself say it the other day, you know, like I'm not a grandparent who does, who plays. You know, I'm happy to see that they're looked after. I'm happy to make food. I mean, the, cl the thing that I do love to play with the kids is I like to cook for them and that's playful for me. 
But I wonder though, if I was to, and I do lose track of time and all that other kind of stuff. Um, and so I don't want to judge myself for that. And I wonder if there's ways, I wonder what it would create in my world if I actually brought in more play. Because one of the things that I have heard myself say too, to my husband over time is I wish we had more fun. Well, I, I, I'm really aware that that would be something that would generate and create a lot more for both him and I, and especially me with myself and with him and I together, you know, however that play looks like you guys, I am just sort of mind blown by this. I'm just seriously mind blown by this whole thing. So, um, this article looks really good by this era, Erica DeJosa. So I'm going to continue, um, reading it for tomorrow's show. And, uh, yeah, just what else with this? Like, how are you guys with play? Do you find it easy or not? So anyways, have an amazing rest of your day. Find something playful you can do. I, you know, I know for me, it's out of my comfort zone and I'm going to see what I can do to create time or at least even just make the list for myself. So, well, you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in and have an awesome one.